Okay, well, welcome back to Higher Physics Revision Unit 2. We're going to cover electric and magnetic fields, standard model, and nuclear reactions in 10 minutes. Here we go. Okay, around a magnet, you have a magnetic field, and it's simply the invisible region where something like a paperclip is going to experience a force. Uh, similarly, around a, a charged particle or between charged parallel plates, um, there is an invisible region, and in this case, it's where a charged particle is going to experience a force, either attraction or repulsion, depending on the charge. You have to be able to draw electric fields. You have three scenarios. Single point charges look like the spokes on a wheel. Two point charges uh, will look like the magnetic field around a bar magnet. Parallel plates is just lines between the two plates. You always draw your arrows away from positive towards negative. It's the direction a positive charge would travel. Uh, and closer together lines obviously mean a stronger electric field. Okay, the movement of particles fired into an electric field. Uh, negative particles will obviously go up towards the positive plate. Positive particles attracted down to the negative plate. Uh, anything that's neutral will just go straight through the middle and be undeflected. Um, the reason these lines are different is heavier particles will take longer to turn. Why are they turning? Um, something that's nice and light, like an electron, will turn nice and quickly. Electric field equation. Work done equals charge times voltage. If you rearrange it, you get that voltage is the work done divided by the charge. So our definition is work done per coulomb of charge. Uh, just like we define other things, we'd look at what's on top per whatever's on bottom. Activity, number of decays per second. Uh, frequency, number of waves per second. Uh, acceleration, change of velocity per second. This is a good way of remembering how we define certain terms. Um, and what this means is if you have a nine volt electric field, that means you'll have nine joules of work done per coulomb of charge. Okay, using W equals QV. Uh, so a typical set of questions for an electric field. Uh, the first thing would be to wor work out the work done by the field. Uh, it might be worded as the work done on the particle. That's where you use W equals QV. Uh, Q is the charge of the particle. Uh, in this case, it's a proton. You get that from your data sheet. You only get the charge of an electron on your data sheet, but remember that the size of the charge on a proton is the same. Uh, and then V is the potential difference of the field. Once you've worked out the work done, the kinetic energy gained by the particle will always be exactly the same because it's an energy conversion. The work done by the field is converted into kinetic energy gained by the particle. And then finally, uh, you can work out the speed of the particle when it gets to the other side of the electric field by rearranging the kinetic energy equation. Uh, kinetic energy, you know, M is the mass of the particle. And again, that comes from your data sheet. Um, just note, at no point did you put in the distance between the two plates. So the distance, if you half or double the distance between the plates, it does not affect the final speed. That doesn't come into any of these equations. Uh, the only time you're interested in the distance is if you're trying to work out the force on the particle uh, and using the work done equation, EW equals FD. Okay, knowledge that moving charge creates a magnetic field. Uh, this is what happens in an electromagnet when you have a current flowing in a wire, you create a magnetic field. And if you put a wire with a current flowing in another magnetic field, those two magnetic fields interact and you'll get some force and therefore some movement. Uh, to work out the direction of the force, we use uh, what we call Fleming's right hand rule. Um, where your thumb is the direction of the force, your first finger is the direction of the magnetic field from north to south, and your second finger is the direction of the current. Now, I like to use my left or right hand, left for protons, positive, right for electrons, negative. P-E, protons, electrons. So um, choose your hands, line up your fingers, work out the direction of the force. And there's a little convention you need to know. Uh, I like to think of a dart. If you see crosses on your page, it means the dart is going away from you. So this means the magnetic field is going away from you into the page. If you see dots, that would be the dart coming towards you. You see the point. That means the magnetic field is coming out of the page towards you. Uh, why don't you pause the video, use your left and right hand, try and work out the direction of the force in these two examples. 
Okay, and the answer was down the page for both of those two examples. Uh, it leads us on to particle accelerators. Uh, in a particle accelerator, particles are accelerated with electric fields and then deflected using magnetic fields. Uh, the whole point of them is to collide particles at high velocities and then look at the particles that uh, are created as a result. Uh, two favorites from the SQA, you have what's called a cyclotron uh, or a linear accelerator. Uh, both of these use an alternating voltage and the reason for that is to keep the particles moving in the correct directions. Um, also, you'll notice these tubes are getting bigger uh, and that's just because the particles are accelerating and getting faster as it travels along the accelerator. Again, okay, that leads us on to the standard model, which is a collection of fundamental particles, particles that cannot be subdivided further. Uh, we now know that the proton and the neutron can be subdivided into quarks, which is why they don't appear on the standard model. Um, you basically have two halves. You have what we call the matter particles. Uh, they're called fermions and responsible for making up matter and subdivided into leptons and quarks. You do need to know the six quarks and the six leptons. Uh, the other half of the table, the force mediating particles, uh, which we call the gauge bosons, responsible for force. Uh, you have the gluon, which is responsible for the strong nuclear force holding together the nucleus of an atom. Uh, you have the photon, responsible for the EM forces. And you have the W and Z bosons, which are responsible for what we call the weak nuclear force. Like I say, you do need to know the names of these different particles. Okay, so we already know that uh, things like quarks were discovered through these high energy collisions between th electrons, nucleons, that's your protons and neutrons, in our particle accelerator. Uh, we've also discovered antiparticles, uh, or antimatter, and we've discovered that every particle has an antimatter equivalent. So for an up, there's an anti-up charm, there's an anti-charm, and so on. Uh, the electron has the funny name, the antimatter equivalent is the positron. Um, and the way you show these particles, if this is the up particle, the anti-up has a line over the top. Uh, antiparticles have the same mass but opposite charge. Um, and like I say, there's one for every particle. Um, we also have hadrons. Hadrons are particles made up of quarks. So like your proton and neutron, hadrons are made of quarks. And they're subdivided into baryons and mesons. Uh, think of your syllables. Baryon, three syllables. That means it's made of three quarks. Meson, two syllables, meson, it's made of two quarks, and it's actually a quark and an anti-quark pair. You don't need to remember the fractional charges on quarks, but you do need to be able to add them together to uh, find the overall charge on a larger particle. Um, so for example, look, this lambda particle is made up of an up, a down, and a strange. So you have two thirds, uh, minus a third, minus a third, add two thirds, minus a third, minus a third, you get an overall charge of zero. Evidence for the neutrino is beta decay. Uh, in beta decay, a neutron splits into a proton and an electron. Uh, and when they added up all the mass and the energy, they realized something was missing and they discovered the neutrino, which is a tiny particle, little mass and no charge. Okay, orders of magnitude of length. Uh, this is just a way of describing the size of an object by looking at the powers at the end of the number. Uh, and to compare them, you just look at the difference in the power. Uh, so this is 20, this is 16. So you can say that this is four orders of magnitude bigger than this. Okay, a bit of chemistry. So for every element, there is a number at the bottom called the atomic number. That's the number of protons in the nucleus, and that identifies the element. So that's the number you're looking for on your periodic table. Uh, the number at the top is the mass number. That's the combined protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And um, for alpha radiation, you lose two protons and two neutrons. So that means your top number goes down by four, your bottom number goes down by two, and you get a new element. Uh, for beta radiation, uh, what happens is a neutron splits into a proton and an electron. The electron leaves, the proton stays, uh, but all you need to remember is the top number stays the same, the bottom number goes up one. Uh, again, you get a new element which you'll need to find in your periodic table. Uh, if it's gamma radiation, there's no change, the numbers stay the same, the element stays the same as well. Fission and fusion, NAT5 recap, fission is splitting a larger nucleus into smaller nuclei. Uh, it either happens randomly, spontaneously, or you can fire in a neutron to stimulate the process. Uh, fusion is the opposite, it's where you're combining two small nuclei into a bigger nucleus. Uh, both of those reactions, the mass after the reaction is less than the mass before, and that's because some mass is converted into energy according to E equals mc squared. Okay, using e equals mc squared, so you add up the mass of the particles uh, before the reaction using information in your data sheet or in the question. Uh, add up the mass of all the particles afterwards. Uh, these numbers just mean you've got two neutrons and four electrons. 
uh, and then you find the difference in mass and it's that difference in mass that you put into E equals mc squared. C is the speed of light and E is the energy released in the reaction. Uh, if you want to have a go at this, have a go at this question, pause the video and here's the answer for you. Okay, finally, fusion reactors. Uh, you'll know that in a nuclear power station at the moment they use fission, but that creates radioactive waste. Fusion would be much cleaner with no pollution, but it requires a ridiculously high temperature to achieve it. Um, so it's still in the experimental stage, um, and they have to try and keep that hot plasma away from the container walls, because otherwise it would vaporize the walls and cool down. Uh, so the way they try and do that is with magnetic fields and levitating the plasma to keep it away from the container walls.